Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to your C-Sharp series. This video, we're going to be talking about multidimensional arrays and a little bit of something else, so hopefully you guys are excited. I say that way too often. There's just so much excitement, I can't handle it. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. Anyways, we're going to start with a normal array. So just a single dimensional array. We'll just create this as an integer array. We'll call it grades and we'll assign it a new integer array. So this is the way we learned a few videos ago. We just throw in a size here such as five and there we go. Now, if we want to create a two dimensional array, we're basically going to have rows and columns and the way you do this is on the left inside of the square brackets put a comma and then over here we actually need to add a comma and then another value so in this situation we're going to have five rows and five columns and just to differentiate what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to make it three rows and four columns that way they're just not the same number we can access a particular element using two indexes so it's going to look like this grades we're going to pass in index zero and then index two and we can assign it a value such as five. Same thing, we can output this, grades, pass in zero, two, dot net run. I should probably have using system up here. All right, let's try this one more time. And you can see we get the value five. So that is a two dimensional array. It's essentially a table. If you need a little bit more background on what that looks like or the background information, check out the previous video because that's my concept video in person where I talk about how this works. Now, rather than going through and assigning a value to each index possibility like so, what we can do is we can actually initialize it with some values up front. And what that's going to look like is, well, let's just get rid of this here. We'll scoot that console right line down a line or so. And then we're going to put curly braces right here. Inside of the curly braces, we can put the arrays we're looking for. So there's going to be three of them. That's because each one is going to be a row and we have three rows. In each one of these arrays, we need to have four values. So it might help you to visualize this if we bring this down to the next line, like so, and then kind of space these out. So we can throw in four values into each one of these. And there you go. That's the easiest way to initialize your 2D array. Hovering over this, it's actually going to recommend a better way of doing this. So it says redundant array creation expression. So you can just say use array initializer. And there you go. So you actually don't even need to have that new array thing we just had. Now we should be able to access row index zero, column index two. So that's gonna be this row, and then this column, zero, one, two. So it should print seven, I guess we'll find out. And we get seven, so awesome. Now there's actually another type of array I wanna to talk to you guys about, and that is a jagged array. Now the syntax for this is just a little bit different. So here's what we're going to do. Instead of putting a comma in here, we're actually going to put two sets of square brackets. Now inside of these curly braces, all you have to do is say new int square brackets and do that for each of these. So this allows us to clearly see what a jagged array looks like. It's essentially an array of arrays, but they don't all have to be the same size. So I can go in here and I can add to a particular array. So that's why it's called a jagged array. Now when we access an element, we're no longer going to use that comma, we're actually going to separate these into two separate square brackets. So this should still print seven. We still get seven, but now we can access, for example, this element, which is going to be index for the row, it's going to be one, which will go here and then index six. So we'll go one, six, and there you go. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the one I said, right? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Anyways, to grab this two here, we need row index one, column index six. So that is your introduction to creating and using 2D arrays and jagged arrays inside of C-sharp. Throughout the next videos, we're going to be talking about how to work with these arrays as well as other types of collections. So I'm super excited and hope you guys are too. Yeah, there's never ending excitement in this series. So thank you guys and be sure to check out that next video.